Hi, it's Gil Robles, and I am going to start a gouache painting. I'm expanding the materials that I use uh, on my lunch hour sketches. I, I did this sketch like I did a bunch of the other ones that I recorded on my lunch hour at work. And so I'm just keeping with that. This this is just a um, an easy time for me to do these recordings. However, I'm, I'm, I'm confined to that one hour you know, or more or less, depending on, on how much I waste, uh, how much of it I waste away setting up and, 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 uh, grabbing a little bite to eat before I start and whatever. But usually, you know, um, I, 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 um, I'm set up within the first, oh, five minutes to, to go ahead. So, um, I'm starting this with, with the pencil sketch like I always do. And, and with this pencil sketch, I'm trying to uh, outline the, the major masses. Just kind of like a block in when you do a, a oil painting and you're just blocking in the major masses and stuff like that. I'm trying to keep with that same uh, a thought because I want to keep it simple and I want to not uh, worry about the details. But I'm also um being being conscious of, of making sure that everything lines up right and everything is where it's supposed to be in relationship to each other like the eyes are lined up right the, the nose and the mouth and the ears are all on their proper axis and so forth so I'm setting this drawing up comparing these things and making sure that um you know all these things are lined up before I go ahead and start and uh, applying the washes and the washes are, are, are simple washes I mean I'm, I'm going to build this up like I said um, using the main uh, the big patterns of light and dark so I'm um, going to introduce these washes and they're not they're, they're not uh, dark they're, they're kind of pale but they they, they kind of set the um, the drawing down for for that I'm going to build the painting on so just trying to keep it simple from here on end you know and then uh, um, uh, worry about the details as I build up these these uh, shapes of light and dark Okay, so that's uh, the major patterns of light and dark put down in, in just a kind of monotone wash here. Um, so I'm going back in there with, with darker washes now, uh, putting in some darker accents, but at the same time not going into details. And, and by the way, this, this is a self-portrait. This is something done uh, from a photograph of myself that I had used as reference for an illustration at some point so um, I'm just going ahead and, and using that for reference here but anyway I'm putting these uh, uh, dark um, washes in, and now the, the washes I'm using gouache um, and the washes are very very thin I'm not um, trying to take advantage yet of uh, the the Thick, the the thickness of the paint that I can I can lay down unlike um, transparent watercolors where we're just basically building be building up these uh, um, these light washes but in um, gouache I'm able to to put more opaque color down but I'm not doing that yet I'm I'm keeping this to pretty much the consistency of a uh, transparent watercolor uh, it gouache has that that flexibility where you know you can go from this to uh, something close to acrylics there, there's also acrylic gouache which I don't use because I, I like um, being able to reactivate the gouache um, with water whereas acrylic gouache you would not you would no longer be able to once you set it down it is what it is you can build on top of it but you can't um, push the paint around as much after it dries so um, 
that that's a, kind of a preference I have for um, for the squash here. So I'm going to continue to build up and by by um, uh, painting over the lighter uh, um, wash by putting the, the darker washes where I felt where I feel like I need to indicate um, where you know just a a, a, a darker value. All right, so I've gotten uh, pretty far over here with uh, with this painting, and treating it like a, a transparent watercolor. And uh, um, first thing I want to say is that up until uh, this point, as I'm working on this, I, I'm using a very very uh, soft brush. You know, it, it's a, a squirrel hair brush, um, and it's nice for uh, laying down these washes. As I get more into the details I can switch to a, a more stiffer brush um, but right now I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm coming back in with some more opaque color and um, indicating some lighter areas also helping this to, um, to to provide some kind of transition between values as well now um, when the paint dries it's always going to look a bit different and also I'm going to be able to um, like I said like one of the things that after I uh, put down the color I can reactivate the color it also gives me an opportunity to um, lay down some um, some cooler colors but up until now the paintings have been kind of like a warm reds browns ochreish colors um, I can come back this this white has a hint of blue in it and I can use um, uh, the, the uh, blue for for to mix with the burnt umber and also uh, deep red color I it used to be illusion but I don't use illusion crimson anymore uh, because illusion crimson is a, a fugitive color it um, the more it's exposed to the light the more it begins to fade so I tried to find a, a red I think I, I have like a red scarlet or something like that or there's also a permanent alizarin that that uh, you can use to, to replace that color if you if you lose use alizarin crimson alizarin crimson is a good color to mix with the, the blues it gives you some uh, very nice uh, purples and stuff like that also uh, you can go uh, between a warm and cool that way if you have a lizard and crimson 
you mix it with the ultramarine blue and you um, which already has some red in it and um, you know the more blue the cooler it is the more uh, alizarin crimson the warmer it is but um, it goes kind of in between because of uh, and, and becomes more of a, a purplish color but if I, I just use the straight uh, without adding white um, uh, ultramarine blue uh, sometimes I'll add um, green a, a dark green and um, alizarin crimson uh, that's how I, I would uh, get my darker colors or sometimes it would just be ultramarine ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber um, and uh, that would be in place of a black but some but also I do put hints of black here and there I try to mix it up with another color so it doesn't become too uh, it doesn't look too flat or or um, because if you paint with black entirely you you don't have that that uh, same transparency as you do when you mix it when you mix other colors to make the black but um, yeah so I'm going to continue to build up um, adding dark accents and then um, coming back the, the whites are a little bit more opaque and I use it for um, adding um, like I said cool colors sometimes in the skin tones and also to to, um, to smoothen out transitions between the different values and so forth um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I, uh, gonna continue to paint in this manner. All right, so I want to say at this point is the painting is pretty much done. Um, I'm, I'm all I'm really doing is I'm making corrections, um, making little subtle changes here and there, uh, refinements to the painting and so forth. But I, I pretty much set the the, um, the the sketch down. Now you know all painting is is that when you when you first start out a painting. You, you estimate, you make some uh, um, some good guesses as far as how you're going to, you know, how, how you're going to develop your painting and so forth. And uh, for the rest of the painting, most of it is corrections. Most of it is making changes here and there. Um, I wouldn't call it second guessing, but I would call it refining your, your, um, your, your painting or your picture idea and so forth so that uh, um, the finish would be again more refined you know more towards uh, uh, what you want so you all this time um, what I'm doing now is making subtle changes to what I initially put down
Okay, so what I needed to do here, which is what I should have done in the beginning, is uh, put in a, a background or, you know, just choose a color for a background because that helps with uh, um, deciding what colors you, you, you use. Or over here, I'm kind of working backwards, but a lot of times when I do these sketches, it's, you know, it's trying to get as much done within that hour as I can, so I just go right to it. And uh, um, what is, in this case, an afterthought should have been something that I took care of in the beginning. But, not, you know, it, it's, it's not, it doesn't throw anything off uh, this time anyway. But it's always a good idea to put down, lay down whatever color you're going to use for the background in the very beginning. Because then you have a, um, you, you know, the, the colors that are in the... The, the, the object that you're painting are influenced by the colors outside of it. You know, color bounces around, um, reflects on objects and reflects on skin and so forth. So, but I have touches of blue in, in, the, um, in, in this painting. Um, so it doesn't throw this off at all. All right, so pretty much the painting is done. I'm just putting in some little touches here and there with opaque white. I didn't go too opaque with this painting. Um, it, the, the paper I was using was kind of uh, thin for, for, for gouache. I like using a heavier paper so that uh, I can apply, you know, uh, thicker passages of gouache. This is the final painting. You can see the color is a little bit different than the version of it uh, as um, I was filming myself painting uh, the, this, the, this uh, picture. But um, this is more closer, more truer to the colors of the final piece. You can see some hints of blue here and there in the darks and, and so forth. So I played a little bit more with the color. Um, but um, I enjoyed doing this painting. I enjoyed uh, I enjoy gouache a lot, and um, I will be back with more paintings and more gouache paintings, uh, and on uh, different materials. I can uh, play around with it um, on my lunch hour, and then film that, and then uh, show it to you guys. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this, um, and uh, I will be back soon with another video. Bye bye.